In this video, I'm going to show you how to send and receive MQTT Sparkplug B messages using Raspberry Pi, Node-RED, and Hive MQ Cloud as the MQTT broker. And for demonstration, we're going to build a simple greenhouse remote monitoring system using two Raspberry Pis. This Raspberry Pi here acts as our greenhouse control unit, measuring humidity and temperature using this DHT11 sensor and also monitoring unauthorized access using this proximity sensor. This other Raspberry Pi is our remote monitoring station. It receives greenhouse telemetry data and displays the temperature and humidity on an HMI and switches on this AC lamp when an intrusion is detected. So to build our simple greenhouse remote monitoring system, we're going to have our Raspberry Pi devices act as MQTT clients that are sending and receiving MQTT messages. And to facilitate MQTT communication between our devices, we're going to use Hive MQ Cloud as the centralized MQTT broker. Now, the greenhouse control unit device is responsible for measuring temperature, humidity, and detecting intrusion, then publishing the data to Hive MQ Cloud broker under a specific topic. And to receive this data from the greenhouse control unit, our remote monitoring station will subscribe to the same topic on the Hive MQ Cloud Broker. But here's the thing, we do not want our greenhouse remote monitoring system to be a standalone MQTT system. Instead, we want our greenhouse information to be automatically discoverable by other Industry 4.0 applications that may be interested in it. Therefore, we're going to use the MQTT Sparkplug B specification which is also supported by our Hive MQ Cloud MQTT broker. Now, with that said, on our publishing Raspberry Pi, we will use Node-RED to read sensor data, convert it into Sparkplug B format, and publish the data to the Hive MQ Cloud broker, which will forward that message to the remote monitoring station. When the remote monitoring unit receives the message, it will also use Node-RED to read the MQTT message decode the spark plug format to extract the information, display the information on an HMI, and switch the AC light on or off depending on the state of the proximity sensor. Okay, so to start building our greenhouse remote monitoring system, the first thing that I need to do is to set up an MQTT broker. And to do that, I'll go to the Hive MQ Cloud portal using this URL address. Now, here I'll sign up for the free basic option which allows me to connect up to 100 MQTT clients. So I'll click on sign up now. Now I already have a Hive MQ Cloud account, so I'll go ahead and log in. If you do not have a Hive MQ Cloud account, you can go ahead and sign up by following a few simple steps. And as you will notice, part of the sign-up process includes setting up credentials that your Raspberry Pi Edge of Network nodes will use to connect to the Hive MQ Cloud MQTT broker. Okay, now I'm logged into my console. And here I've got a cluster that was automatically provisioned for me by Hive MQ Cloud during sign-up. So I'll go ahead and click on Manage Cluster. Now, here under Overview, I can see my broker URL address or hostname and the port number. Notice here that we are using TLS for encrypted MQTT communication. And then here under access management, you can see the credentials used by MQTT clients to connect to this broker. And these credentials can be updated whenever necessary. So just like that, my MQTT broker is set up and ready to receive messages from clients. What I'll need to do is to copy my broker details and use them to configure Node-RED running on my Raspberry Pi devices so that I can start publishing and subscribing to my MQTT broker. Now, I'm going to show you how to set up our greenhouse control unit Raspberry Pi to read and publish sensor data to the Hive MQ Cloud broker as MQTT spark plug messages. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to make sure that Node-RED is running on my Raspberry Pi. To launch Node-RED, I'll open my Raspberry Pi terminal 
and I'm using PuTTY to access the terminal from my PC. So I'll type the IP address of my Raspberry Pi here and then open the connection and then I'll log into my device. And then once I'm logged in, I'll type in the node red start command on the terminal to start node red. If node red is not installed on your Raspberry Pi, you can go ahead and install it first. Now, once node red is running, I'll go ahead and access its web interface using my browser. So I'll pull up my browser and type in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi at port 1880 and then here i've got my node red dashboard so here the first thing that i want us to do is to read data from the dht 11 temperature and humidity sensor and to do that you need to have installed the dht 11 node red package which you can do by going to your menu here selecting manage palette and searching for node red contrib dht sensor which I already have installed, so you can go ahead and install it. Now, once your DHT11 package is installed, you can proceed with creating a node red flow for reading, converting, and publishing MQTT Spark plug messages. So here on the dashboard, I'll first drag the inject node. I'll then get the DHT11 node. And then after that, drag two function blocks onto the canvas and then wire them up like this. Now let's look at the individual nodes in this flow. So if I double click on my timestamp here, I can set it to repeat at intervals of five seconds. And then next, I'll open up the DST node to look at my DST11 sensor settings. Here you can see that I have selected DST11 as the sensor model, selected BCM GPIO pin format, and set pin number to GPIO pin number 4, which is the pin number my DST sensor is connected to. So I'll click on done. And then here I've got my function blocks for extracting humidity and temperature values. So here I'm passing the string coming out of my DHT node into a float value. Now the next step is to take my humidity and temperature sensor data to prepare a spark plug B object. And to do that, I'll need two function blocks. Okay, so inside each of these function nodes, I've pasted the code for creating a spark plug object. Here you can see that we are taking the output of our DHT11 sensor and using it to create a spark plug B object. So for our matrix, we've got the name, the alias, data type number 9, which corresponds to a float data type and the actual float value. And then we do the same thing for our humidity data. And then I'll connect this up. Okay, once we've prepared our SparkPlug B object, we now need to use a SparkPlug encoder node to encode this message before transmission. And to do that, I'm going to need a protobuf node red package, which I can install by going to the menu, manage palette, and then searching for node red contrib protobuf. Again, I've already got that installed, so you can go ahead and install it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and look for my protobuf encoder node. And I'll drag it onto the canvas. And then I'll connect the output of my sparkplug B message function node to the input of the spark plug B encoder. And then I'll do the same for the humidity data. Now to perform spark plug message encoding, 
This node requires a Sparkplug B dot proto file, which you can get from the Eclipse Tau project. I'll provide the link to the file in the description below. So you can go ahead and download the file and make sure to save it with a dot proto extension. Now once you've got the file, you can use a file transfer tool like WinSCP to copy the file to a directory of your choice on the Raspberry Pi device. As you can see here, I've got mine copied onto the home slash pi slash sparkplug b directory. Next, if I double click on my sparkplug and code node, you will notice that I have put the file path to my sparkplug b dot proto file. Okay, now that we have encoded our message in sparkplug format, we can go ahead and publish it to our Hive MQ Cloud MQTT broker. And to do that, I will need to drag our MQTT transmission node onto the canvas. Now, if I double click into my MQTT transmission node, you will see that I've configured my Hive MQ Cloud as my MQTT broker. And under connection here is where I've put my Hive MQ Cloud broker URL address or host name that I copied from the portal. Also, you'll notice that I've set the port to 8883, selected to use TLS, and assigned my device an MQTT client ID. And then under security here, I've put the access credentials that I created on my Hive MQ Cloud portal. Finally, here under topic, I've put the Sparkplug B topic namespace, where I have assigned my greenhouse as the group ID, D data as the message type, and my Raspberry Pi as the edge node ID. And then I'll go ahead and connect this up. Okay, so we have successfully wired up our flow for transmitting temperature and humidity values as Sparkplug B payloads. The next thing that we want to do is to include the flow for reading our proximity sensor data and publishing it to the same Hive MQ Cloud MQTT broker. So I'll copy and paste the flow here. So on this flow, we are using the Raspberry Pi specific nodes to read the GPIO pin where our proximity sensor signal is connected. And then again, we're using the output of our sensor to create a Sparkplug B object. So here you can see that we are using a data type number 11, which corresponds to a Boolean data type in Sparkplug. And then for our Sparkplug B encoder, we are using the same settings as those for our DHT11 sensor. Finally, we are going to include debug nodes to see the information that we are sending to the broker on our debug window here. And then here I'll change this to full object. And with that, we've finished configuring our greenhouse control unit Raspberry Pi for MQTT Sparkplug B transmission of temperature, humidity, and intrusion detection. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy this. And then open up our debug window. So as you can see, this is the data that we are currently reading from our DHT sensor. So if I open up one object here, you can see that the current humidity is at 83. And our temperature is at 20 degrees Celsius. And we currently do not have any information coming out of our proximity sensor because we haven't detected any intrusion. So I'll go ahead and use my hand to create an intrusion scenario. And then once I do that, you can see here that we're getting a Boolean value of one. Now, before we set up our monitoring station to subscribe to our greenhouse information, I'm going to use mqtt.fx to subscribe to the Sparkplug B topic 
on our HiveMQ MQ Cloud broker in order to test if we are successfully transmitting our greenhouse MQTT spark plug messages. So I'll go ahead and connect to my Hive MQ Cloud. And then as you can see here, I'm subscribing to the same topic. So I'll go ahead and click on subscribe. And then as soon as I do that, you can see our information coming through. So I'll go back to my browser. Now I've gone ahead and logged into my monitoring station Raspberry Pi, started Node-RED and built our flow. So let's go ahead and access the Node-RED dashboard of my monitoring station Raspberry Pi, which is at IP address 192.168.0.1 at port 1880. Okay, so let's go through each node in my flow. So if I double click onto the MQTT subscribe node, you can see here that I'm using the same Hive MQ Cloud settings as those of the publisher. And that I'm subscribing to the same topic namespace. Next, I've gone ahead and downloaded the Sparkplug B.proto file and transferred it onto the same directory as that of the previous Raspberry Pi. Now here I've got a function block that filters through the messages. If the name of the metric is temperature, we send that to output 1. If the name of the metric is humidity, we send it to output 2. And if the name of the metric is proximity sensor, we send that to output 3. And here, my output 1 is connected to the gauge for displaying temperature. And my output 2 is connected to the gauge for displaying humidity. And my output 3 is connected to a Raspberry Pi specific node which controls a GPIO pin where my lamp is connected. Now for you to be able to display this information on an HMI dashboard, you need to have installed the Node-RED dashboard package, which you can do by going to your menu here, selecting Manage Palette, and then installing the Node-RED dashboard package. Now, if I open up my display temperature node, so here you can see that I've selected a gauge type, I've assigned a label of temperature, and I've assigned a range of 0 to 100. And then if I go to my display humidity node, you can see that I'm using the same settings as those of the temperature. Okay, so I'll go ahead and deploy this flow, and then open a new tab, to access our Node-RED user interface. Which is at port 1880 slash UI. And you can see the current readings of our greenhouse temperature and humidity. And if I breathe into my DHT11 sensor, you should see the niggle move. Okay, so you can see a change in temperature and humidity readings. And then if I simulate an intrusion here, we should see our AC lamp go on and off. Okay, so we've successfully built our application that demonstrates how to send and receive MQTT Spark Plug B messages using Raspberry Pi, Node-RED, and Hive MQ Cloud as the broker. And because we're using MQTT Sparkplug B specification, our greenhouse information is discoverable by any Industry 4.0 application that may join our MQTT network. I hope you enjoyed this video about real-world MQTT for Industry 4.0. Please check out the IFMQ YouTube channel for more videos like this.